Presiden Joko Widodo akan berkunjung ke Washington DC Amerika Serikat November ini. Dalam lawatannya, Presiden Jokowi akan bertemu dengan Presiden Amerika Serikat Joe Biden dan menghadiri Konferensi Tingkat Tinggi Kerjasama Ekonomi Asia Pasifik atau APEC. I'm Friska Clarissa and we would discuss more about President Jokowi's visit to Washington, Indonesia US strategic partnership and also global stability in this special interview with the U.S. Ambassador to Indonesia, His Excellency Sung Yang Kim. Ambassador Kim, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Great to see you. Really great to see you. The President of the United States, yeah. Joe Biden, invited President Joko Widodo to Washington, D.C. Uh, to attend the bilateral meeting yeah. this November. It will be the second time for President Jokowi visiting the White House. Mm -hmm. At the first time, there was a very good chemistry between President Jokowi and mm. former President Obama. What would be main issues that will be brought to the meeting and what will be the difference from the first one? Mm. Well, thank you very much. First of all, we're very excited uh, to welcome President Jokowi to Washington, D.C. Um, there's a lot for our leaders to discuss. Uh, just looking at what, what we have accomplished together yeah. in the past few years, uh, I think we take, should take great pride but also look forward to how much more we can do together, uh, whether it's in the economic area. I'm very proud that our bilateral trade numbers have gone up uh, significantly over the past two, three years. Our investment numbers are up as well. I think mm -hmm. we're the fourth or the fifth largest investor in yeah. Indonesia. Mm -hmm. We're working on very important initiatives together, like the Just Energy Transition Partnership, which will advance our global cause on climate. Mm -hmm. Um, in the security area, as I said, I think U.S. and Indonesia share a, a strong commitment to maintaining peace and prosperity mm -hmm. in this dynamic region. Um, and then I'm also excited that our two countries will be celebrating the 75th anniversary of our diplomatic relations next year. Yeah. So I know that our leaders will look forward to what we can do uh, for the next 75 years uh, mm -hmm. in terms of addressing bilateral goals, but also broader regional and global goals together. Hmm. Specifically, how does the U.S. see the Indonesia and U.S. strategic partnership? Oh, I think we value uh, our partnership with Indonesia greatly. Mm -hmm. We have great respect for Indonesia's leadership role within ASEAN, but more broadly. Okay. Uh, frankly, I think Indonesia's reach is global, um, whether it's on issues like climate, or whether it's on issues like how do we help Afghanistan women uh, mm -hmm. and children achieve education, how do we help uh, Rohingya refugee situation out of Myanmar. Um, so the partnership is quite deep uh, and this is why our two leaders decided that it's time for us to elevate our strategic partnership to mm -hmm. a comprehensive strategic partnership, um, which I think is going to make our relationship much more robust and cover many more areas of cooperation as well. So our two governments are working very hard to come up with a plan of action uh, that will be approved by our leadership in the coming weeks. Okay. According to the Economic Partnership, uh, the U.S. will chair the APEC mm -hmm. Economic Leaders Week. How to actualize the main theme, creating a resilient and sustainable future for all? Yeah, so I think it's great that when I was looking at resilient and sustainable uh, growth, it's very close to the theme of the Indonesia's presidency of the G20. Uh, yeah. Recover strongly, recover together. Um, and I know that President Biden is very much looking forward to welcoming leaders of our APEC uh, partners, including, of course, President Jokowi. Um, I think if you look at um, what U.S. and Indonesia are doing together, um, it's sort of a good example of how countries are working together to create an environment that will allow for resilient and sustainable growth. Indeed. So, for example, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, hmm. uh, that important initiative includes four pillars, and those four pillars will directly impact how countries can actually recover more strongly together. Mm -hmm. uh, things like supply chain resiliency, green economy, uh, trade facilitation. So, delighted that uh, the U.S. and Indonesia continue to work together uh, to advance our common goals. Regarding to the economic stability, uh, President Joko Widodo said that mm. the high interest rate policy in the U.S. also threatens Indonesia's economic stability and complicating economic conditions, as well, especially for the developing countries. As one of ASEAN's dialogue partner, along with China, India, the EU, Japan, South Korea, and Australia, how to conquer this? Mm. Well, 
as you know, central banks in many countries, including our Federal Reserve, have been struggling to deal with challenges posed by COVID-19, yeah. uh, including, of course, uh, the very high inflation rate. And uh, I think the interest rate reflects their concerns about uh, the uh, inflation situation. Um, but I remain optimistic about prospects for the U.S. economy. Uh, so the job creation numbers are very impressive. And I know that as the U.S. continues to do well economically, it will, as President Jokowi suggests, uh, it will have a positive impact on the global economy, starting with our key trading partners like Indonesia. Mm. And about, uh, refer to uh, President Jokowi's statement that geopolitical mm. problems couldn't be separated as a part of a global challenges such as the unfinished war mm -hmm. between Ukraine and Russia, also the war between Israel and Hamas, which means that a number of economic challenges mm -hmm. continue to increase. What would be the concrete way out of these challenges? Yeah, so I mean, we are together facing some enormous challenges, very complicated challenges that are difficult to solve yeah. uh, uh, by any single country. And this is why the U.S. is intensifying its dialogue cooperation and partnership bilaterally with key partners like Indonesia, but also in different multilateral contexts. Uh, you know, we have the Quad, we have AUKUS, uh, and the, within the ASEAN, I mean, we are, are an important partner to mm -hmm. ASEAN. Because we believe that uh, these challenges require cooperation. Uh, and so we will continue to work closely with our partners to make sure that we're dealing with these challenges effectively. I should add that um, you know one way to get out of these difficult challenges is for countries to start behaving better, for countries to respect international law and cease activity, unlawful activities in violation of other countries' sovereignty and rights. According to this global stability challenges, Indonesia through the OIC and in front of the mm. United Nations Mm, urge the realization mm. of an immediate ceasefire in Gaza to stop more civilians' casualties. And recently, President Joko Widodo emphasized that Indonesia is extremely angry and strongly condemns mm. Israel's random attacks against mm. civilians and civilians' facilities in mm. Gaza. Due to the humanitarian issues and rights, mm. how does the U.S. see this? And what will be the solution? to bring back peace, to stop the war, and save the innocent civilians. Yeah, first of all, let me say we're deeply concerned about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Yeah. President Biden, Secretary Blinken, and others have spoken about this uh, in great detail. Deeply concerned about the well-being of the Palestinian people. And this is why we're working so hard with Israel, with Egypt, with relevant UN agencies and other partners mm -hmm. to try to facilitate a sustainable uh, flow of uh, humanitarian assistance to the Palestinian people in need in Gaza, and that effort will continue. I should note that I mean, the U.S. has long been the largest donor to the Palestinian people, and that will continue as well. That said, I, mean, I think we can agree that um, terrorism is unacceptable, uh, and we should condemn terrorism when it happens. Um, in regards to any type of pause, I would refer you to what President Biden said just recently about uh, the importance of thinking about humanitarian pauses uh, mm -hmm. to allow for the flow of humanitarian assistance. So it will be possible to do? Well, I, mean, I think we're, we're going to do everything possible uh, to help uh, the Palestinian people in Gaza uh, to make sure that they receive the humanitarian assistance they need and that the humanitarian assistance that we're sending is not diverted uh, to Hamas. And so it's a complicated situation, as you know. So we'll have to work very closely with, uh, with our partners there, including Egypt, uh, Israel, and UN agencies to make sure that uh, the assistance is going to the people who need it. Mm, so still the priority is for the civilians uh, absolutely. in Yes, absolutely. Yes. You know that Indonesia's government stands with Palestine alongside with the support mm -hmm. Uh, from Indonesian people through several rallies and mm. demonstrations in Indonesia as the U.S. ambassador. How would you explain this situation to the President of the United States? So uh, I think one of the great things about Indonesia is that it's a democracy. People have a right to speak their concerns. Uh, people have a right to gather and hold protests. 
So my office actually overlooks the area where they have been holding protests, and I've been um, uh, impressed by just how orderly and peaceful these demonstrations have been. Uh, and I uh, appreciate cooperation that we're getting from the Indonesian law enforcement agencies here. But, you know, people have a right to speak and share their concerns publicly, and, and I respect their right. Mm -hmm. And how does the U.S. see the strategic role that Indonesia could take part to encourage global stability in hands of President Biden and President Joko Widodo's mm -hmm. administration's relation? Yeah. Um, so one of the reasons why it's been such a privilege for me to serve as the U.S. ambassador to Indonesia for the past three years is that our two countries share a lot. Uh, we have a strong commitment to democracy, have a strong commitment to tolerance, diversity, and for the rule of law. Um, and that applies domestically as well as internationally. So I think both of our countries are totally committed to maintaining a free and open in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have tremendous respect for ASEAN centrality. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I do believe that Indonesia uh, plays a critically important leading role, leadership role within ASEAN. So we expect and look forward to working closely with Indonesia, um, not just on bilateral issues, not just on Southeast Asia issues, but well beyond uh, to in the Pacific broadly and indeed globally as well. Um, so, I mean, we have great uh, respect uh, and affection for Indonesia's role and our strategic partnership with Indonesia. And how to improve and strengthen our cooperation? Well, I think both sides have to work hard uh, to expand and deepen areas of cooperation. We're doing okay, but I know that we can do more. So, for example, um, our trade figures, as I mentioned, our bilateral trade is going up, which is good. But given that we're the third largest population and Indonesia is the fourth largest population, I actually think that our bilateral trade should be even bigger. Um, mm -hmm. Again, uh, in investment as well, um, we're I think number four, number five largest investor. I think we should be number one or two. So I think both sides need to work together to explore opportunities together and to make a dedicated effort to expand and deepen our ties in the full range of issues, not just on economy, but security-wise. Our militaries are working together very closely, but we can do more. Um, education, health sector is another uh, very important area of cooperation between our two countries that have implications well beyond our bilateral relationship. And how do you see the future of our cooperation? I'm very optimistic. Uh, I really do think uh, you know, it's true, while we may not agree on every single policy issue, I think we do have that shared commitment to important values and principles. Uh, and, that, and there's also a shared interest in expanding our relationship. Um, and this is why you know, we're elevating our strategic partnership to a mm -hmm. comprehensive strategic partnership. Um, so I think the potential is enormous. Uh, the commitment is there. Mm -hmm. So I'm very optimistic about prospects. And the last one, this is the political year in Indonesia. How do you see this? Oh, it's fascinating. I think it's always exciting to watch democracy in action. And Indonesia is certainly a very vibrant democracy. I mean, it's, I've been following the news very closely and look forward to seeing the result of the election next year. So, and hope everything is getting better. Also, our cooperation, Indonesia and U.S. cooperation. Thank you so much Thank for you your time. Much. Ambassador Kim, the U.S. Ambassador to Indonesia, His Excellency, Sing Yang Kim. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Itu tadi perbincangan kami dengan Duta Besar Amerika Serikat untuk Indonesia, Sung Yang Kim. Saya Friska Clarissa. Sampai jumpa. Saya Harjuno Pramendito. Saksikan program-program Kompas TV melalui siaran digital, pay TV, dan media streaming lainnya. Kompas TV, independen, terpercaya.